Hi guys, welcome to the second episode of Cricket World Podcast. In the last episode, we relive the shocker of the match at Leeds between England and Sri Lanka. And just when we thought it can't get any better, we had a super Saturday feast for all cricket lovers in the form of India versus Afghanistan and New Zealand versus West Indies. It had the crisis, survival, escape. It had it all. So, dude, how was your Saturday? Yeah, amazing, man. Who would have thought that Afghanistan would put India in such spot of water? Seriously, great. And uh, we, we, not just Afghanistan, it was followed by New Zealand and West Indies. The whole day was something, right? The whole day was, it kept yeah, on going. Yeah, back to absolutely. Yeah. One after the other. Yeah, no, no respite for the fans. Yeah, and you shouldn't have also. You have been wishing to see such games for quite a long time. After all the rain we had experienced. So, yeah, we are getting everything now. In the World Cup. Yeah, we're getting what we deserve now for all the weight. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, to start with India versus Afghanistan at Southampton, a few things impressed me. India wasn't tested till this point in the World Cup. If I take uh, Champions Trophy as a re- reference point, India had it easy in the league stage and semi finals and all through. It was in the finals that they were subjected to pressure and they succumbed to it. So I'm very happy right. that they had uh, this kind of a game. I was expecting this kind of a game from um, Bangladesh, particular match tested Virat Kohli as a captain and uh, he got to explore his resources and know better about his resources which a captain should be knowing in match situation than in a training session and then um, Virat Kohli did rise as a captain both with the bat and on the field and also this gave rise to uh, like they say crisis situations give rise to opportunity and then uh, Kedar Jadav took good care of his opportunity and the uh, man for all situations yeah. absolutely Indian Navy so also uh, when it came to <laughs> Afghanistan's chase I love the fact that they took it deep no one expected them to take it deep and and uh, Mohammad Nabi's composure in the chase was absolutely top class. Anything could happen. Absolutely. Anything could have happened in the last over. W- w- what did you make out of the match? Yeah, seriously, man. And uh, to restrict India to that sort of a score, just 223, uh, when the speculation was that India will always going to post, you know, post a big total against Afghanistan, but that was not to be on the day. And uh, and they believed in themselves. They certainly believed that they could chase that down. And uh, the way they started off, it promised. And uh, and the fight was on. And uh, India was under pressure. And uh, in the middle overs, it was again up to the spinners for delivering, just like the Afghanistan spinners did to the Indian batsmen. But that was also not to be. And Bumrah was uh, required, and uh, he got a few blows in the middle. India was back in the game. The match was in the balance, and then came Tanzin hero, Mohammad Nabi, and uh, the man who has done it all for Sunrisers Hyderabad in the IPL also. And he showed up. He showed that his experience with the Indian cricketers mm, around. Um, he 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 imbibed a lot, and that showed. Uh, on his gameplay, he, he took the game in, uh, long and deep, and uh, he played out um, the crucial bowlers. Uh, and when the time came, he even attacked them. Uh, be it Ahal, be it uh, Bumrah, even that uh, that pull in that uh, crucial over, uh, it certainly tilted the balance towards Afghanistan again. And Rashid Khan was accompanying him on the other side, and uh, the owners had uh, shifted on our bowlers to deliver, and uh, he. he he just took it upon himself and um, and it went till the last over and then that uh, boundary of the first ball itself and uh, the pressure was back on and then Shami delivering so uh, it was it was an amazing game and uh, Bang- uh, Afghanistan showed that uh, they had the spirit and they could challenge India at the biggest platform and they did it and uh, it was quite a lesson to be learned uh, for all the big teams out there. Yeah, I wish Afghanistan gets to play more on such wickets than flat wickets. Uh, and yeah, a spare of thought for Mohamed Shami, he got a hat-trick. And this is uh, the first ever hat-trick by an uh, Indian pacer in 21st century. Absolutely. Yep. What a feat. What a feat. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think it's fair to conclude that India won the match with experience. Um, then uh, we say that Afghanistan lost it due to inexperience. They they definitely didn't look like an inexperienced side chasing that. Right. Yeah. Very so, much so. So the next game, I, I mean, as if as if the whole drama wasn't enough for us on a Saturday night. It it, it, it continued. It continued. Sheldon Cottrell got uh, Colin Monroe and 
Martin Guptill for Golden Ducks. And Martin Guptill yeah. was coming back from, a, I mean, he, he recorded the highest ever score in a World Cup match against uh, West Indies in the previous edition, 237 not out. And he went out yeah. for a Golden Duck. And again, like they say, crisis situations give rise to opportunities. And who better to grab it than uh, Kane Williamson and Ross Taylor? Absolutely brilliant partnership between those two. Uh, I mean, Kane Williamson's century was top class. I uh, People saying that Shaky Balasin could be the man of the tournament, but Kane Williamson has been the best batsman of the tournament. He's played in all conditions and made sure that New Zealand came out on the winning side. Brilliant, just brilliant. And the, and the chase and West Indies chase, man. Carlos Brathwaite. Oh. <laughs> Breathtaking. Yeah, um, that, that is what that is what cricket admirers wait for, right? That um, uh, once in a million innings. So and that was that. <laughs> Seriously, from nowhere, Carlos Brad was taking over, and, uh, and when when people were expecting the uh, West Indies top order to just um, uh, play their role uh, to perfection, if they had to chase this down, but that was not to happen. Um, Chris Gale fired um, uh, 7 of 84. Uh, he looked that that night was going to be his, but. Um, uh, that wasn't to be again, and then 164 for seven from 142 for two all, right? Yeah, 142 so, for two in 22. So they required less than six runs and over at that point where Shimran Hetmeyer and Chris Gale uh, were in middle of a partnership, which was 122. Right. Yeah. So, so 164 for seven, and then um, Brad Red just took took, uh, took the onus upon himself. He just took it. That, uh, this is my game. I am just going to show off uh, my ability. And um, what better time? It's like after 2000. 16 T20 World Cup uh, when you just heard of his name and uh, Ian Bishop um, uh, kind of uh, assessed on the fact on remembering it oh yes uh, we certainly remembered yet again that one on one knock from 80 deliveries uh, playing with the tail enders were all mugs with the bat who so literally <laughs> They cannot hit a boundary uh, um, if needed. So it's not uh, simple for for a batsman to play for all all that time. You know, this is 50 overs. This is no T20 that you're just going to go bang bang and then the game is over. No, it's it's quite a span of time, and you just keep on need to uh, build partnerships to get the wicket. Uh, you mean uh, get the run? So it's unfair if I uh, put England as a reference point to this match. Uh, England had a better tail and batsman coming up than uh, Windy's. Uh, Kima Roach uh, and Sheldon Cottrell are nothing as compared to Chris Wokes or uh, Adil Rashid or uh, Jofra Archer. So, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, they, they, they showed determination. The England tail enders didn't show at all. They showed that uh, this is our last chance uh, and uh, uh, to be uh, around in this World Cup. So uh, let's just pick on, let's just give, give our best. And they just hung around Bradford and Bradford played some glorious shots and, and those strokes of his that were like sublime and uh, anyone who was uh, who was uh, watching the match staying up late in India or wherever uh, in the world uh, even the commentators were like astonished to see the talk making and and again we Ian Bishop was on commentary and uh, that same voice and <laughs> the show out there happening uh, Matt Henry getting hit for 24 runs uh, and then the equation was like <laughs> 6 out of 7 deliveries and it came down to that thing where uh, you either had to take a single or else go for the big shot and there was the number 11 batsman on the other end last over would you take the risk of taking the single but no he backed himself and uh, as he has been backing all this inning and uh, he fell caught to uh, who else but Ben Bolt the man who just keeps on taking them uh, from any position so yeah and then yeah. the crucial catch match over so, and also how good was that over from James Nisham uh, I mean that, that was a pressure pressure mm-hmm. over that was a high pressure over from James Nishan. I mean, what a game, what a game. Uh, um, at least uh, uh, one of the best uh, innings I ever saw in a World Cup. So, yeah. Unbelievable. I, I mean, we can fairly say that India and New Zealand survived the night. I, I don't think it's fair to say West Indies and Afghanistan lost their matches. I think India yeah. and New Zealand just about survived to get right. through the night. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I, I hope, I hope the viewers are enjoying your podcast, man. 
and um, yeah i also hope so <laughs> they have been getting getting a treat from the players uh, they have been celebrating with all their might so yeah they they keeping an eye on yeah. everything you guys do do follow us on the social media cricket revolt is on uh, facebook and instagram keep an eye on it absolutely yeah. and uh, your your comments uh, uh, and views will always inspire us in um, this carrying on this thing and I hope you guys are loving it so yeah yeah leave your comments guys this is this is the best phase of the world of the we are going through yeah right okay guys we'll then goodbye and we'll see you in the next podcast yes man